So you're wondering if you'd be able to print something on your smaller printer. I get this question a lot, so I thought I would make a tutorial video showing you guys how to slice up your helmet in case you have a smaller build volume. Now the great thing about this is that it allows you to print literally anything on any sized printer. I rarely actually print my helmets in one piece. Usually they're done in three main pieces, the top, the front, and the back. So even though it's not printed in one piece, you can still end up with a great final result. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to slice your own helmet in order to get it to fit on your print bed. So here I've got the standard phase two trooper that I've brought into Mesh Mixer. Now Mesh Mixer is a free program from Autodesk that allows you to do some slight modifications to SDL files. In this case, we're gonna be cutting it. So with the object selected, let's go to edit and plane cut. This is going to insert an invisible plane through the object that will act as our slicing plane. Now, currently it is set up, if you look here, to discard the half. So you see this area and uh, that's kind of see-through. That would be discarded if we left it as it is. Let's go ahead and change that to slice, keep both. That will keep both sides of it after we have sliced it. We can use these transformation arrows to change the location of our cut. I generally like to do it right above the frown. You want to put these cuts in as inconspicuous places as possible because they can be tricky to hide if your helmet is not assembled properly. That's why I like to put it in the corner of this area and can be easily hidden. So once we're happy with the placement of it, we can hit accept. And it looks like nothing happened, but when we go to separate shells, that will separate the helmet into the two pieces that we made. So you see here, they are now two different pieces. We're gonna repeat this process with the back here. If we go to edit plane cut, and let's adjust this using this modification tool that changes the angle of the plane. So now it's going up and down instead of left to right. And let's move this back behind the ear. This is another inconspicuous spot. People don't really look too close behind the ear. So a cut at this location is pretty prime. Let's change it to keep both and hit accept. Now we separate shells again, and now our helmet will be in three pieces. Okay, that's great. Let's bring it into our slicing software quick to see if it's small enough to fit on our print bed. So here I've brought the top in, and this slicer is set to a CR10 build volume, which is 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, and we can see that it fits no problem. But let's change the parameters of our build volume to something a little bit smaller. So let me just adjust this to something a little bit smaller. If we go to Configuration Assistant, we can select a different printer that will default the build volume to. Let's go with the Ender 3. That's a popular choice. And we can see that it no longer fits on our print bed. In this case, we would need to go back to Mesh Mixer and cut them up a little bit more. So let's go to plane cut again. This time, I think I'll cut it down the center of the mohawk instead of left to right. So let's move this, keep both, hit accept, and then separate shells. Now we've got these two, and if we look, uh, we might be able to squeeze that in. Let's, let's have a look. We will export both sides and bring them into the slicer to see how they fit. So here I've just got the right side of the dome. Let's see if we can get this to fit if we twist it a little bit. Yeah, perfect. So down the center of the mohawk obviously isn't ideal, but it is pretty easy to fix. You just might need some more bondo and a little bit more care and attention. But what started out as being too big now can fit on your printer. So with this technique, you should be able to print any file on any sized printer. I hope this was useful to some of you guys. Like I said earlier, Mesh Mixer is a free program, so it can't hurt to learn this skill. I've had some people ask me in the past if I could do this for them, and I always tell them that it's better to learn how to do it yourself if you're serious about 3D printing because this is a skill that is gonna come in handy so many times down the road. You're gonna wanna know how to do it yourself, and you're gonna be glad that you learned it. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it useful. I'll see you in the next one.